Peg had to go to bed before party finished, didn't it? Ah, she was dropping in a chair. Ah, too much to drink, eh? No, 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 she hardly had out all evening. What about young Sally then? Isn't she beautiful? They both are. Little lad's named after me, you know. Oh, I don't hold it against him. Hey, come and sit down, Mar. I'll make drink. She'll be helping Peg. Hey, give us a brandy. Now, how many teas? How many coffees? Go, go for me. The coffee for me. No, no. It's Peggy. I don't know what to do. I went upstairs to see how she was. She's just lying on the floor. I can't wake her. Hello. Hello, Dr. Scott. What? When? Yes, I will. Thanks for letting me know. What's the matter? Peggy Schoolbeck. She's dead. She died at 11 o'clock last night. Thank you for coming over, Vicar. I was at the hospital most of the night. You went to the post-mortem? I wanted to be there. Did Peggy die before you got to the cottage? And... She was in a coma when I arrived. Her husband phoned just before 11, and I was there 10 minutes later. According to what the family told me, she went to bed at half past nine. She had a headache and was very tired. I see. It was a subarachnoid hemorrhage. I haven't explained this to the family yet, but as you know them so well, I wondered if you... Of course. I'm afraid, however, you'll have to explain it to me first, because... Well, the subarachnoid is the space between two membranes covering the brain. Now, there's no way of knowing for sure exactly what caused the hemorrhage, but it seems most likely that an aneurysm was ruptured. That's a swelling of the blood vessel. It's like the inner tube of a tyre full of air bulging until it bursts. But sh surely isn't there any warning? No, not in a spontaneous hemorrhage. It can occur in a patient with normal blood pressure while she's apparently sleeping peacefully. Is it always fatal? No. But it is one of the few things that can cause instantaneous death in an otherwise healthy person. Poor Matt Schoolbeck. Mm. How must he be feeling? No warning? Nothing? In the majority of cases, it strikes like a bolt out of the blue. Let's go for a walk, Joe. Come on. He was nice, weren't he? Bill Ensley. It's his job. Undertakers are paid to be nice. He knows that, don't he? What do you mean? He knows he'll be in charge of us. End of it all. I didn't sleep at all last night. Me. How's Matt taking it? He just sat in his chair. Didn't say much after the doctor had left. Oh. Can't believe it. No. I mean, she's gone. That's it.
much as Dr. Scott told me. We're grateful to you for coming. Excuse me. I'll leave this, Sam. When you feel you can, you might like to choose some hymns for the funeral. Uh, thank you, Vicar. I'll, I'll have a word with Annie uh, when she's feeling like it. Vicar, do you reckon anybody could have done out about it? Sam, I'm a layman in these matters. I know very little at all about any of it. But I listened to everything that Dr. Scott said. And I believe she did everything that could possibly have been done. I asked her the same question myself. She told me that she honestly didn't believe there was any way of knowing about it before him. Or of doing out about it. And I believe her. Now, I know that there's nothing I can say, or the doctor, that's going to make this any easier for any of you. It makes a lot of difference, knowing somebody cares. What I can't understand, what I'll never understand, is why, Peggy, I know. Why anybody like uh, Peggy, I mean, she were a good lass in every way. Not an ounce of wrong in her anywhere. And then out like a light. It's not fair, Vicar. Sam, that's one of my hardest problems. Finding an answer that people can accept. To account for all the suffering of innocent folk. Famine, fire, flood. Why does an almighty and all-merciful God allow it? Come in. <coughs> oh, hello, Sam. Vicar, is it all right? Aye, of course. <coughs> just wanted to look in, Sam. Annie's upstairs with twins. Oh, hi. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll get on up to Hawthorne Cottage. I must see Matt. Aye. Uh, I, I reckon he'd be glad to see you, sir. He hasn't talked about it much since it happened. Uh, well, not to us, anyhow. He, he, he might need somebody to talk to, you know what I mean, somebody who's not family. Right. I'll see myself out. Don't move. Nay, now I'm here, I don't know what to say. No, no need to say anything, Amos. How's Annie taking it? Oh. Well, we none of us can rightly take it in uh, at the moment, and that's a fact. You let me know about funeral. I'd like to be there. Uh, it will be up to Matt. Oh. Sally had a little bit, and that's all. Hey, okay, I didn't hear you. Just thought I'd call in and pay. Can I get you anything? Tea's still warm in the pot. Will that help us? No, I, I, I must get back. Life goes on, doesn't it? I'm only sorry old Dr. Grant left so soon. What do you mean by that, Amos? Well, no disrespects, but he knew Peggy better than Dr. Scott does. Dr. Scott were there ten minutes after Matt phoned. Not only that, you were in hospital all night for the post-mortem. Doctors don't have to do that. She's taking surgery now. She didn't want us to be kept waiting and wondering. So she took the trouble to explain things to the vicar. And just told us everything she was able to find out about Peggy's death. She even gave him a letter with it all written down. So if you come here to pay your respects, I'll say thank you for the thought. But I'll not have you or anyone else in Beckendale say a word against Dr. Scott. She did everything she could. 
if there's any blame to be taken, it's on me. I'm a mother. Happened if I'd made Peggy go and see doctor about her headaches. She might be alive now. But we'll never know. Because things like that are in God's hands, not ours. Asleep. I gave him one of the tablets Dr. Scott left. That's a lot needs deciding, honey. I don't need to do anything tonight. Twins all right. Aye. Jack's done well. Arrangements he's made. The way he's looked after things. Surprises me sometimes, does Jack? I think sometimes he surprises himself. He's not a bad lad. He hadn't come back to cottage when I left. Hope he's not gone off walking on his own somewhere. You know how he broods on things. Joe went up early. I told him I'd stay till you came home. I can't sit there all night, lass. I want some cocoa. Not tonight. Been a long day. I, I was thinking it's going to be difficult when Henry comes back on Monday. Difficult? How do you mean? He's not going to get much sleep if twins wake up at night. Nothing anyone can do about that. Happen to be thinking of moving anyhow. Happen you will. We'll have to see. We don't know what Matt had in mind yet, do we? Whatever he decides could affect all future at Barnes. 